Today I'm going to show you how to make a really sneaky, excellent dessert or something to serve at a party. Christmas, by the way, and because it is Christmas, I figured we wouldn't have to be too healthy this time. I would love to tell you that mince pies have got huge health benefits, but I'm not sure they do. And in my recipe, I am about to make mince pies probably less healthy than they originally were. So if you're looking for a super healthy um, <laughs> vlog today, this isn't the one, but they are delicious. So um, this is how I do it. So like I said, I did say on my intro that it was very cheeky and cheaty. That's very true because I basically start off with shop-bought mince pies. I'm just going to do a couple to hate words. So you buy shop-bought mince pies. I've got Waitrose deep-filled shortcut mince pies, but I don't think it really matters. And you need to take them out of their foil casing and chop off the top. Like I said, I said if I could give you health be benefits of pastry, then I would. I don't think pastry has any health benefits whatsoever. But by cutting the top off, I'm getting rid of most of the pastry, but we are going to replace it with something that's probably even worse for you, so don't get excited. Chop off the top of the pastry, so you're left with just the mince pie, like that, with the mince meat in the middle and the pastry around the outside. So do this for as many mince pies as, as you're planning to do. Oh, by the way, obviously, we always forget this. Obviously, uh, at this point, you've already set your oven to about 180 um, on a fan. You could set it lower if you liked, if you wanted to bake them for longer. By the way, tip, if you've got these mince pies that have got the top that's sat on top, like that, rather than the one that's kind of inside, I tend to find it helps if you pick the outside bit off like this, go around like that, and then slice off the pastry. It's a little bit, a little bit tidier than my first attempt. See? Look at that, much tidier. Once you've done that to as many mince pies as you want, it's the bun bit! You can use pretty much any kind of liqueur or alcohol you like. I think traditionally people would probably like to use brandy, and I think it's probably very tasty with brandy, but I love amaretto. This is de Serrano, obviously. I love that kind of amaretto -y taste at Christmas. I think it's really delicious, and it does complement mince pies really, really well. So this is what I use. So you just literally need to stick a teaspoon of whichever liqueur you want, brandy or whiskey or whatever, into each mince pie. And then I give it a little gentle prod with a knife just to get the liquid through the mince meat. Always just sits on top. A little poke like that. Right, the next step is making the meringue, which is very simple, as I'm sure you all know how to make meringue, but I'm gonna do it anyway. So first of all, depending on how many mince pies you wanna do, uh, one egg will be enough for two mince pies. So you want to separate your eggs uh, your egg yolk and egg whites, so you just want to keep your egg whites. You need two tablespoons of cast sugar per egg white, so depending on how much meringue you want to make, obviously if you're doing one egg's worth, you want two tablespoons of sugar, two eggs worth, four tablespoons of sugar, etc. First of all, before you start adding your sugar, you need to whisk up your egg whites. I'm using one of these Kenwood hand whisks, which I've had forever, my mother bought me this, and it's brilliant, it's really good. So you want to mix until the egg white becomes stiff, and you can actually like hold it over your head without it pouring on your face. So I whisk my egg whites until they are like this. They're not going anywhere. At this point, you want to add a drop of lemon juice. Um, literally, it just stabilizes the meringue. So then, this is where you add the cast sugar or icing sugar. Um, I must add this point, it's very important you add it, add it gradually. So you can't just tip in your two tablespoons and then bend it up. You need to add it really gradually, tablespoon by tablespoon, and bit by bit. Off we go. Bit by bit. When both tablespoons of cast sugar have been gradually um, mixed in with the egg whites, you should have something that resembles this. Um, and it's slightly pearlescent looking and quite glossy. And like I said, you should be able to hold it above your head. <laughs> so at this point, you have two teaspoons. Um, some people would obviously you can get a piping bag and pipe the meringue on. Um, I just use two teaspoons, but it doesn't matter really as long as you get the meringue on top. At this point, you want to make sure the meringue kind of hits the, pe the pastry because you don't want it to have an air gap. So. Here are my little two middle, my two little mince pies, snowy capped mince pies, off they go into the oven. So look at these, I mean they aren't the most beautifully done because I'm not, like I said, I'm not exactly the most artistic person in the world. But you see how golden they are, um, they've got like a little crispy meringue top, and like I said if you want to be really creative you could pipe it on and maybe make it look a little bit more elegant. They're definitely a bit of an extra special treat to have during Christmas time. And if your friends say to you, did you make these? You can be like, yes, I did. Even though you probably only made the top third. No one used to know that. And you did still technically make them. Yeah, I definitely think it's something that's really simple um, and they are really tasty. And all my um, friends absolutely love them and so do my family. So I recommend you give them a whirl. So I hope you enjoyed my sneaky trick mince pie meringue recipe. Um, let me know how you get on if you have a go at making them. 
Um, don't forget to watch my other videos and to subscribe to my channel. Merry Christmas! <laughs>